Hello guys, and welcome to our channel. In this video, we're going to talk about chicken harvesting and processing technology. It is a usual practice for a percentage of chickens to be harvested for processing on several occasions. This practice is referred to as thinning out, sometimes as partial depopulation or multiple pickup, and may be done up to five times depending on the chicken company's market requirements for different sized chickens. Thinning out barns allows more space for the remaining birds and helps with the management of optimal barn temperatures and air and litter quality. The first harvest might occur as early as 30 to 35 days and the last at 55 to 65 days. Chickens are often harvested at night as it's cooler and the birds are more settled. They're generally picked up by specialized contract pickup crews under low lighting conditions so that they are calm and easy to handle. They are usually caught by hand and placed in plastic crates or aluminum modules designed for good ventilation and protection from bruising during transport. In some cases, chickens are collected by a specially designed machine that uses a series of conveyor belts to move birds from the barn floor and deposits them into crates or modules. Regardless of whether caught manually or mechanically, the crates or modules they are collected into are then handled by forklift equipment and loaded onto trucks for transport to the processing plant. First, the birds are stunned. Stunning is the process of rendering animals unconscious before slaughtering them for food. The stunning renders the birds insensitive to pain. Most commercial poultry slaughter facilities render chickens unconscious prior to slaughter through the use of low voltage electrical current or controlled atmosphere stunning. Not surprisingly, the stunning of chickens has been the subject of considerable research and discussion. Many wonder whether stunning is humane, if there are alternative methods of stunning, and if there are any safeguards in place to ensure that chickens are not slaughtered while conscious. After the birds are stunned, they are hanged upside down on shackles by hand. Dead upon arrivals or birds with other significant quality issues are removed from the production process. At this stage, the birds are counted per flock and then sent to the killing process. In the killing process, the birds can be killed with different cuts. Whenever a cut is unsuccessful, the bird is manually cut afterwards. Since the birds hang upside down, they bleed out through their neck for some minutes. Blood is a byproduct and sold in bulk. After the bird is killed, the blood circulation stops. This will start up chemical reactions that affect the quality of the meat and organs. Thus, the faster the bird is processed, the better. Technology makes slaughter extremely quick to minimize discomfort. While making a single cut to the throat of an unconscious bird is largely effective, should the blade miss for any reason, trained workers stand by to quickly euthanize remaining birds. Proper maintenance of equipment and this backup human system is key to a fast and humane slaughter process. After the birds have bled out, they enter the scalding process. Several baths of hot water will macerate and clean the bird's skin. Proper agitation of the scald water through the use of water pumps or addition of air pumped into the scald tank ensures efficient wetting of the feathers. Multi-tank counter-current flow scalders are very effective in the removal of dirt and organic matter from the carcass, and ensures carcasses are progressively exposed to cleaner water. This practice is important in preventing cross-contamination. The rate of water flow should also be high, minimum of 1 to 2 liters per bird, to reduce organic buildup in the scalder tanks. The use of pre-scald washers and scrubbers has been effective in removing adhered fecal matter on pelvic and pectoral feathers and preventing the fecal matter that is typically expelled post-mortem from entering the scalders. Next we have defeathering. After scalding, the birds immediately enter the defeathering machines in which rotating discs with rubber fingers remove the feathers from the carcass. However, if the rubber fingers are not maintained in the defeathering machines, improper feather removal and damage to the carcass can occur broken wings, skin, and muscle tears, and carcass bruising. Any damaged, worn, broken, and missing rubber fingers in the defeathering machine should be replaced daily to assure a proper break-in period and that carcass damage does not occur. Multiple defeathering machines, usually three to six, are used to target and remove feathers in different parts of the carcass. After feathers are removed, the birds are sent to an eviscerating line to remove internal organs and feet, also known as paws. Every single part of the bird is used. For example, chicken feet are considered a delicacy in Asian countries and feathers are rendered and used as protein in some animal food. Modern chicken evisceration machines are designed to reduce labor and improve quality. Depending on processing speeds and labor costs, various options exist. These include the automatic transfer of chicken from the defeathering line to the evisceration line as well as the transfer off the evisceration line to the chill line. 
Automatic evisceration equipment is generally considered for speed lines above 1500 birds per hour depending upon labor costs. An evisceration line comprises of several machines, each performing a specific operation. Evisceration is one of the most critical points for preventing carcass contamination during processing. If the broilers have not had long enough to empty their digestive tract before processing, and if there is viscera damage during evisceration, then the likelihood of carcass contamination with the contents of the digestive tract is increased. Each step of evisceration from the opening of the abdomen to viscera and crop removal is critical, and must be monitored continuously. Timely equipment maintenance and adjustments are extremely important to reduce and or eliminate visible contamination. Carcass washers, using chlorine where allowed, strategically placed in points with likely contamination are beneficial in terms of prompt removal of contamination. The harvesting of giblets, heart, liver, gizzard, and necks is done following evisceration through either manual or automatic processes. Harvesting is again a critical area of contamination and cross-contamination that requires constant oversight. The extent of bacterial load on the final product is an extremely important parameter, in addition to continuous maintenance of the cold chain and determining the shelf life of fresh poultry. Next, the head and feet are removed and processed as waste or bulk, such as skin and paws. Then the organs and other viscera are removed in the evisceration process as well as the neck and neck skin. Most of it is sold as bulk. The last process step is chilling and maturation and takes around two and a half hours. At the first stage, the broilers are cooled down extremely fast to stop any growth of microorganisms. The two most common methods of carcass chilling are water immersion and air chilling. Immersion chilling involves placing carcasses into a counterflow water system at zero to one degree Celsius for one and a half to three hours, depending on carcass weight. The aim is to reduce the deep muscle temperature to less than four degrees Celsius to inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Where chlorine is allowed to be used, one of the key issues in water immersion chilling is to maintain a free chlorine level of about 5 ppm to reduce the likelihood of cross-contamination. In areas where chlorine is allowed to be used, chlorine is more effective at or near a water pH of 6.5. Organic acids are commonly used to acidify the water to enhance chlorine effectiveness. Air chilling systems are growing in popularity partly because there is less water uptake of the carcass than with immersion chilling and the potential for cross-contamination is reduced. Air chilling systems are characterized by chilling carcasses in environmentally controlled room with forced cold air. Because the rate of heat transfer is much slower with air than in water, it takes much longer to air chill. Recently, carcass chilling systems involving both water and air chilling have become available. Then, the chilling process is slower to speed up the breakdown of protein. The broiler maturates to improve the quality and shelf life. Monitoring the chilling process is very important since the birds lose moisture and is equivalent to losing weight. To prevent moisture loss, the birds receive a thin film of water internally and externally. After properly tested and chilled, the carcass is typically cut and deboned to accommodate a variety of different products. Depending on the processing plant, these products may include the fresh or frozen chicken sold in stores, chicken used in restaurants, or exported. After a specified period of time in a facility's chiller baths, the poultry are recovered for processing. This often involves the use of sharp bladed instruments to debone, trim, and cut the birds into various parts. In many cases, these parts can be processed with seasoning, spices, marinades, and other ingredients for customers. Secondary processing may also occur in which parts are converted to ready-to-eat products such as hot dogs, sausages, or nuggets. Packaging of birds, either in whole or in parts, occurs as a last step prior to shipping to food distribution networks. Once chicken is cut up into parts, it is packed in trays and wrapped. The wrapped product is then inspected again to ensure that it meets or exceeds both consumer and customer expectations. Wrapped product is placed in baskets and sent through a blast tunnel to receive a chill. This is done so that the product can have an extended shelf life by keeping it fresh longer. Though the product is significantly cooled during this process, it does not freeze. After the product is properly chilled, it is weighed and priced and safe handling instructions are affixed to the package. Labels on chicken packages must be approved by USDA prior to application on a product. The product then passes through a metal detector for one final check to ensure that nothing is present in the package that doesn't belong there. Finally, the product is packaged into boxes where a label is placed on the exterior of the box. This label displays the date packaged, USDA seal of approval, and the establishment number of the plant so that the product can be traced to the establishment where it was produced. 
Chicken production in industrialized countries has undergone huge changes in the course of the last century. In the past, chickens were fed on farm diets and kept to produce eggs and meat. This has changed with the establishment of specialized industrial production systems that are characterized by factory farms. Industrial farming as a system of raising animals using intensive production line methods that maximize the amount of meat produced while minimizing costs. Chicken factory farms have thrived significantly in the past two decades, and they supply the large share of chicken meat demands in the country. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.